Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is July 20th, 2024 at 9.35 a.m. And this is vlog number nine. And I don't know if you notice here. Can you tell me the difference between one of the printers? Let's see. There's one, two, three, and four. All right, I'll tell you. This one, slide is off. Because I finally got to update the firmware. <laughs> yep, it was a little bit confusing for me in the beginning, but um, it was all figured out. And I'll run through updating the other three. Shout out of sorts to uh, NW Channel. Uh, he commented, hey, it might be because you're LAN only mode is on and so I gave that a try among other things which I'll talk about and it worked so thank you for that I really appreciate it um, and even the error message went away it was indeed just uh, a bug like they had mentioned in some of the forums I was reading um, although I need to give it another run, like basically print out another one to see first if that's actually the true case, but I'm pretty sure that's that's what happened there. If not, there's just a screw behind uh, the head here. You gotta loosen it and then tighten it back up, and then it'll go away. Um, just to show the firmware update, we're at 0.1. 03.00.00 while the other ones they are 01.02.00.04 so we'll get those updated um, and I'm going to do it before I run the next prints and we're going to get this opened up today and set up I'm going to print out the razor because people are really saying you got to give it a try and <laughs> I did see a little video on it and it does look pretty awesome so I'm going to give it a try. Maybe I won't have to use these uh, blue blue snippers anymore to take this off. I could just use that razor. That would be nice. These are, these are fine but... Um, I saw a video where somebody was just took that razor that comes with the bamboo lab and zoop, came, you know slid it right off. It was amazing. Um, as you can tell here, I did put this on LAN only mode, um, so I'm gonna have to take that off LAN only mode. I put LAN only mode right away on the printers because. I want my data to be safe. I want my files to be safe. And I heard that you just got to turn the LAN only mode on if you don't want your files being sent to uh, sent over a cloud. You know, what if scenario? What if uh, Bamboo Labs gets hacked and your network's exposed to that hack? So when I heard all these things, I'm like, oh, turn on LAN only mode. Privacy. LAN only mode. And I was like, okay. But you can't really do <laughs> a whole lot in LAN only mode. I mean, I really couldn't do anything. Um, so I turned on LAN only mode first. And then I connected, tried connecting a Wi Fi and putting in my password. And it's just not working. I'm going, what the heck? This is the right password. Why isn't it working? And so it started to frustrate me a little bit. And so what did I do? So I pretty much went to LAN only mode. I turned it off because I figured, you know what, this might be an issue. Then I logged into Wi-Fi and it worked, which was nice. And then uh, I signed into the account and using the Handy app, I binded, I bound, I bound the printer to the Handy app and it showed up on the computer app which was nice and then I was able to update it from there but every time I went through settings 
to try to update it even though I was connected to Wi-Fi it just said latest so I don't think you can update from the printer but luckily I was successfully able to update from the the handy app to the PC print uh, to the PC app it, it was a bit of a thing but we'll run through that right now um, so let me go turn on the computer actually all right let's get this thing on okay here's those funky looking chairs I'd say I'd never sit on one of these until I sat on one of those for many years and started to hurt my lower back and so I started sitting on one of these and it's it's great for the lower back it just hurts your thighs <laughs> because it's just such a thin fabric and you're basically sitting on um, the edges here so but hey my back feels better guys I'm gonna bring you up into the screen here um, through screen recording so I'll see you in the computer all right so basically you just want to make sure you logged in um, so you'll find out by seeing a username right here and then you just want to go to device and then click on this no printer and uh, you, you can't find anything here uh, so how I went about it is first make sure that your internet connection your network band is at a 2.4 gigahertz and mine was I thought it wasn't but the uh, extension I'm using my Wi-Fi extender is a 2.4 gigahertz once you've ensured that it was a 2.4 gigahertz uh, then you can come in here um, just have this ready and then now we're gonna go to the printer all right first things first is you want to go to settings you want to go down to LAN only mode in case you turned it on and uh, you should turn it off Wi-Fi you want to select your network obviously I'm blurring all this stuff out it's private and then you want to put your password all right once you're connected you want to go ahead and click account and it's gonna give you a barcode you're gonna to have to scan that with your handy app and let's jump into the phone here all right we're here in the handy app and you just want to go over to devices down at the bottom and then you just click bind printer and you just go over and bind your printer then you'll see this screen here saying it's binding you just click on read and accept and confirm to bind and it's binded bound all right once you log in it'll tell you your account and then this automatically um, popped up so that was really nice that I didn't have to go to the computer and do it because that didn't show up on the uh, on the uh, computer yesterday or on the <laughs> printer yesterday so I'm really happy that I can do it through here all right the update was successful and I'm just doing the same thing for the other ones now maybe I just didn't get it um, or maybe I didn't see it yesterday when I did that one but I'm glad you could just do it on the printer like this what happened was as soon as I connected it to my phone's app meaning binded it bound it um, it showed me and after it was successfully bounded binded uh, can't get that right um, it shows your account number for a second I just waited for about like 10 seconds and then the update from where it turned up came up on the screen and then I clicked update and then there was another screen I clicked update and that's how that happened but if you did want to do it through the um, PC app here you would click here where your devices are at and then you would click on one of the devices and then click update and then it'll it'll update for you or you can click update firmware but this one's already updating we got all the successful updates that also means we're gonna have the lights off which I'm super excited about I do not like having those lights always turning on um, so that's really good all right well now that we've gotten these printers all updated um, the most important thing again now is to just continue production so let's run through the morning routine I'm gonna take off the prints and start the next batch okay here at the assembly station I did assemble all those units and we also got some back here and next all that remains is just basically putting them on 
uh, the product itself. This is just a piece of the big, bigger product. Let's get these uh, prints off the print bed. And one thing I do want to mention is that as soon as the updates were finished, I went and I turned land mode back on, which basically uh, signed me out of my account. So it basically disconnected the printers uh, from the bind to the phone, to the handy app and also the PC app. And then I also turned off Wi-Fi. I just want to be cautious about this whole internet security thing with uh, Bamboo Labs or Bamboo Lab. I don't know why they are making it necessary uh, to do that, but eh, it is what it is. Anyway, I use uh, SD card. I put all my files on the SD card. I feel safer that way. All right looking great as usual all right let's go ahead and just start the next print Ooh, uh, I don't know if you can see it down here in the corner but it's got like a gradient background to the prints now it's just a little a little fancier that's pretty cool all right start this one as well what do you guys think of leaving on those uh, tests so the flow calibration and uh, the bed leveling I just leave it on so it comes out great every time but do you guys turn it off is that something you you'd like to leave on too I'm just kind of curious I'm, I'm thinking about testing it sometime uh, maybe the next print I do I'll just won't turn those on um, and just let it print and see how it turns out and, and you see when I take off the prints off the print bed, I don't take the print bed off, the PEI sheet off. I just kind of take off the print and keep going. I would imagine that if I were to take off the PEI sheet, um, it would be important to re-bed level it just in case there are any minor changes. Um, but there isn't, so I think at least. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. That would be, that'd be an interesting uh, topic to cover. All right, let's also take these off. I just want to check this. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, let's go ahead and take these off. These stick so well, like really well. So I got to be very careful how I take these out. See right here, I feel like it's just so stuck on there. And again, no complaints. I'm very, very happy with the way it sticks. Super good. All right. Oh, man. It just looks so clean and nice. I love it. Very cool. Very cool. I get stuck on looking at the prints every time I take it off uh, the print bed because I'm just kind of amazed. My routine with the Creality CR10SEs were like oh it was not good um i would start the prints and um i'll put up a picture here um as i describe it and it would run through its pre-tests like the flow calibration and the and the bed leveling does for these a1s the the creality cr10 sc has those pre-tests too i think it's just a bet i think it's just a bed leveling so I would wait till all that happens and then um, I'll put 20 minutes on the timer uh, to come back and to see if the print's actually going good because it would turn out a lot of the times like this. So that was an absolute nightmare because I would get the um, print started, one set would work and then I'll come back to do the second set click print and then come back 20 minutes later only to see that only to see that that's doing that again and it was such such a pain um, because I'd have to take off the PEI sheet and sit there for about 20 minutes using this scraping just scraping and scraping because it's so, printed so close to the PEI sheet um, in that section you saw the bottom section that it wouldn't come off and then when I would print it out and look at the bottom 
um, like, like let's say I start the next print, I'll print it out and look at the bottom and you would see like a ghosted version of that and I'll show you, um, I have one that, that has that and I'll show you in a second. Let me just turn these off. I mean, uh, let me just take these off. Yeah, this is looking great too. The, one of the screw holes came off, which is totally fine. Let's put that back. Take this string off. Today's going to be a longer video because we're going to do uh, the AMS version. But uh, it's going to be cool to see all that today. So left. And then we'll go here to um, do the right. And we're good to go. So what I got here is a Bamboo Lab A1 and then the Creality CR10 SE print. And uh, I want to show you here. See all that on the bottom right hand corner and the top right hand corner and even here. Those are all leftover um, print uh, material, PETG, from the previous failed print that I couldn't scrape off the print bed so this is a perfectly functioning piece that i made on the creality cr10 se but because it had that aesthetic defect or just that ugly look in other words i said i can't do it i mean you just compare it to uh to this like this is just gorgeous you know what i mean like i can't i couldn't i couldn't allow myself to send this out and it, it was kind of a bummer because basically I have a limited amount of filament, so I got to really be careful about how I use it. But and then you can tell that um, the bamboo lab, which is now here on the right side, because I flipped it, um, it's just much shinier than the Creality CR10 SE. Here is on the left. Overall, it's just a better quality print. And um, on a total side note. It's 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit in this printer room. Dang it, I got to fix that. No, those issues were just cosmetic issues um, on the plate that I was showing you just now. I, uh, You got to do QC on your own. You got to find out what your level of quality is that you want to be sending out. And I knew that I wanted it to look good and um, for, for the parts to be uniform as much as I as much as I can uh, so I couldn't send that out even though it was a perfectly functioning product um, I did actually put it on and test it out on one of the you know the rest of the product and it worked fine but as I looked at it it was just not I wouldn't be happy if I, w if I were to have received that so I decided not to put it in oh and looks like the update didn't fix the uh, resonance frequency of the x-axis is low timing belt may be loose so once this print finishes up there's a little screw behind the uh, the head here I'm gonna have to go in and uh, tighten that up but enough uh, chit chat let's get to the bamboo lab a1 combo all right guys let's get this thing opened up I love how they package their their um, printers. It's very clean, wrapped up real nice. It's got like all these little coverings on key areas. It's really neat how they also um, screw down the build plate so it doesn't go back and forth. It's really nice too. It's really good that they do that. And it says over here, if you could see it on the camera, I'm not sure, but please keep the box. Will do. Always do, actually. All right. There you go. It's a little heavier. Um, and since I'm dealing with such little space, I'm going to actually take this box out of here for a second. Now, just cut the tapes off of here. And here. And then to open up some more so that these flaps open this way. Just cut it up there. Cool, cool, cool. 
All right. I'm gonna bring the camera around this way. Okay, guys, so this is what we're looking at. We got the um, PEI sheet right here. I'm gonna just cut the tape off. That's connecting it to the box. Cool. Has the manual, which I'm gonna be needing to build out the, the printer. I kinda already know how to build out the um, Bamboo Lab A1 already, but the AMS system, I don't really know yet. So I'm gonna need it for that. Let's take this tape off. Cool. I'll put it on this side, actually. Now we're gonna need some space to unload everything. Oh, that's cool. Oh man, that's so cool. I really like how they package it. <coughs> you got all these spool holders, fancy looking things. Very cool. This looks like the stand. They did a really good job designing things. It looks all really nice. The design language is really uh, consistent with their other printers. And yet another um, toolkit. So I know we're gonna need some things from here. We're gonna need this guy, this long one. And we're going to need these screws and the purge wiper screw, scraper, what? Well, scraper screw too, AMS light. So we're going to need all of them. Cool. Oh, and there's more here. AMS stand for stiffener for top mount latch. Okay, so I'm just going to keep those, take those out of there. And um, I know we're going to need the oil. So we'll just take those out and have it ready for when I install it. We're also going to need this for the tubes, but we'll do that later. I'm going to close this up. And what I also like to do at this point, I like to designate which printer it came with. So this one was printer number four. And then uh, this one's obviously printer number five. So I just like to keep things organized like that. Let us just continue taking this stuff out of here. Maybe I got to take this off. Yep, and there's nothing left here. Okay, here's the main part. Very cool. You know what? It's really light. I thought this thing was going to be super heavy. But obviously it's going to be heavier with the spools on there. But as the standalone unit, this thing's hollow and it's light which is really nice. Okay, cool. Let me put this aside. All right, so it did also come with the spool holder. I was really hoping it did, just in case I was not gonna use the AMS and I needed more space. But I'm really glad it comes with the spool holder, just a standard one. You got your power cable. You got the, um, basically you got the, uh, the purge mechanism. And then the gantry and the electronics housing. Yeah, I'm gonna put these aside for a sec. See, one thing I love about this gantry is its weight. It's so heavy and just solid metal, you know, towers right here. I love that. I really love that. Another thing I like is that you can actually stand it up on its own without having to lay it down, unlike the Creality printers where you have to lay it down and frequently it would be on the motors. So I just set down the gantry here. And here's the uh, electronics housing, the base. Okay, I'm gonna set this down too. All right, down here, uh, this is I think just like a desiccant. Um, you got your guides, your filament guides, and just a little bit of filament um, to be able to use. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just clear out this area. So I just put everything back how it came out of the box, all the uh, you know packaging material, and I'm just gonna put it back in the box there. And then I also numbered the box. 
so I put um, this is printer number five so somewhere on the box I write printer number five or just number five on there so I just put everything back how it came out of the box all the uh, you know packaging material and I'm just gonna put it back in the box there and then I also number the box so I put um, this is printer number five so somewhere on the box I write printer number five or just number five on there all right so what I like to do is just keep all like the trash in here I think I'm unnecessarily organized in this process um, but I just I just want to make sure everything is where it is is where it should be in the cooking world I think it's a French term they say mise en place which is everything has its place so I like to just keep everything in this bag here awesome PEI sheet man I love these PEI sheets they're so clean and nice okay let's pull out this instruction manual on how to build it and actually pop this in here bamboo lab a1 with ams light comes with all the things here sorry for the fan noise by the way i turned up the fan it got really hot in here so first things first is install the build plate with correct orientation aligning the edge with the uh, with the heat bed so just pop that in there. Bam. We're just going to flip o flip the unit on its side. And I'm going to unscrew all the screws that are holding the hot bed in place. By the way, this is also extremely light, which is very nice. I like that it's light. There's four screws here. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. Let's see. Four screws. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to pop that like that. If you do buy from uh, Micro Center, just know that you won't be getting discounts on filaments. I don't know too, too much about it, but I read it somewhere online where if you buy from Bamboo Lab themselves, you'll get discounts on their filaments. So that's just something to consider. I don't buy Bamboo Lab filaments, um, but I did buy this AMS version from uh, bamboo lab themselves just in case I w like I want to have the option of getting discounted filaments from bamboo lab All right, so you pretty much just put this in at an angle And it just sits sits really nicely flush and then let's see what else it says here Unlock tool head so cut the zip ties and cardboard wrap around the tool head and x-axis remove the seven zip ties and two foam paddings on the printer frame Using my snippers here, I'm just going to cut these zip ties. Alright, now um, push the heat bed fully to the front end where the screen is located. Open the Y-axis cover. Pull the Y-axis cover gently. So, we just pulled that um, bed forward. Lifted that up and gently push, uh, pulled it back. Okay. And I think this is where we start installing all the screws where the green um, circles are. All right, I got all those screwed in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm going to flip it around because I know that there's some in the front. Yeah, so I went ahead and I just took this tape out because I, heard, I felt it catching as the bed was going back and forth. Yeah, now it's smooth. But as the bed was going back and forth, I felt it like, you know, getting hung up like ever so slightly which would show up on the prints which now I kind of want to open these up and take the tapes out of them just in case all right since I already know I'm gonna have to oil uh, this giant guide rail here I'm gonna do that now and as it suggests just give it a nice wipe all right so I'm just gonna open this up slide that forward okay I'm going to go on the shiny part of the metal here. Okay. Slide that back and forward. And do it on this side. Alright, back and forward. And again, just one more time on both sides. There you have it. That thing is ready to go. I'm just going to pop this plate back in. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get this in, and sometimes it's very simple. Let's see. 
Just make sure you pull this cord out of the way because it can get annoying. And this time, all right, this time it was very simple. Let's double check. Yep, we're good to go. Go ahead and take this sticker off. Since I don't use this PLA, I just stick it on that just in case I ever want to see it again. These instructions. Now this is the part where we flip the machine um, on its back so we can work on attaching the wires on the bottom and I'll get that shown for you. So basically we just want to grab the machine and be as gentle as possible and we're going to flip it. I'm actually going to slide the bed back, flip it and put it like that as gently as possible. All right, so here is the back. We're going to need this cable. Okay. Now, first things first, uh, we want to slide this in and it's got these two little, uh, two little hooks here and here, and we want to guide that in as best we can. Please follow the instructions. There's also a little, uh, USB-C connector right here that you need to connect there. So just make sure you follow those directions. All right, that's in there. Um, and then now there is a little screw here that's already, if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can, you can see it. And uh, you just want to screw that in. All right, that's screwed into place. Then we'll just go ahead and plug in green with green. Make sure it's in the correct orientation. Okay. All right, so next we want to go ahead and do white with white. That's put in. We got a yellow cable down here, so we just take off the tape. And then we got to wiggle it in through this little tooth right here. Make sure the tooth is it's behind the tooth so it keeps the wires in there. And then there's already like a portion of this that's kind of straightened out. So I figure you could just put it in like that. It's already kind of done for you, if you will. Then snap and snap here. That's snapped into place. This is a yellow with yellow. There you have it. This thing's ready to be flipped back over. Make sure the wires are in there nice and neat. Let's just get this printer flipped back around. Cool, cool, cool. Flip this around, take this off, and this just slides in through the back here. Bam. And then there's a specific screw just, just for that piece there. And that specific screw is called for purge wiper. So we just pop that there. And there's a little hole on the bottom here. You just stick that through and tighten it. Okay. So pretty much you just grab that open it from there. I like to put it about this much over. Cool. That's there. That's good to go. Part numero uno. Part numero dos. For AMS stand. Cool. You just pop that in there. All right, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we got <laughs> we gotta finish putting this thing together. That's that. It's looking pretty cool so far. Let's see what's the next step. Cool. So as you can tell, port one, port two, which I'm assuming is this and this, and pop it in. And then you get the longer ones. Pop that in, pop that in. Cool. I feel like number one should go on the right side, number two here, probably doesn't matter, but I'm just trying to do it in such a way where the tubes aren't crossing each other. There you go. All right. Simple enough. All right, guys, all we got left to do is just to put the power cable and I won't be using the um, AMS system in its full capacity in this video because I the video is really dragging on. But uh, I do have some uh, black PETG from CC3D 
uh, that I'm going to print the scraper on. So I'm going to get this thing plugged in and turned on and calibrated and ready to go. By the way, this is a cold swap printer. Uh, so with the SD card, you don't want to take it out while the printer is on. So you want to make sure you turn off the printer and then take out the SD card, put it back in, then turn it back on. Um, one little one little thing I like to do for organization purposes, I like to grab uh, I like to grab this blue tape marker and I like to put what number printer it is. So this one's gonna be printer number five. I got my uh, number five on there. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Unleash your creativity. Let's click start. I'm gonna click English here. It's North America. Connect to Wi-Fi. I'll skip that. Did you accept the following documents? Sure. Join the user. No, skip. Uh, yep. And we're gonna do the calibration. Start. I think I forgot something kind of important. I forgot to uh, plug in the AMS. <laughs> well, it's still running its uh, test. So once it finishes up, I'll plug it in. The calibration is complete, and I'm just gonna go ahead and actually plug that in. All right, guys. So I pretty much just went ahead and I plugged it in right there, and uh, that's pretty much it. I did uh, turn off the printer first, just in case. Um, I just turned it off and plugged it in. I'm actually going to probably update the firmware on this. So I'm going to do that really quick and then come back, load the PETG on number one on the AMS. And we'll print out that razor. All right, guys. So this thing's updated and ready to go. I threw that spool of CC3D black PETG on here. And I'm just going to load it in from the bottom. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that yellow button there and just feed it through. Oh. You could just let go and it starts uh, feeding it through by itself. So let's go to the print files, scraper. Use AMS, bed leveling, dynamic, dynamic flow calibration. So it's an hour and 20 minute print. Okay, so I guess I'll be seeing you guys in an hour and 20 minutes. Well, one small thing I did forget to mention, I ended up putting the bucket here I printed out on the CR6 Max. So that thing's ready to go. Okay, guys, so I came in here and I saw a bunch of bits everywhere so I should have known this and I kind of had a feeling I just kind of thought that maybe the flow calibration would compensate but um, maybe this is sliced uh, with uh, PLA in mind instead of PETG so it didn't come out looking great so what I'm I have two options I can either take the sliced file open it up in um, the bamboo software and slice it with PETG but I think I'm just gonna use PLA so I'm gonna pull that PETG out and then um, use a really cool PLA filament that I have and pretty much I'm just gonna use my uh, my vacuum here to clean it up all right guys I'm gonna get this done and then uh, once the print is finished, I'll uh, see you guys then. All right, I loaded in this super old PLA that I have. It's translucent blue. So that should be really cool coming out uh, for the razor handle. All right, guys, I'll see you back when that is all done. All right, it finished up. It's looking cool. It's looking good. It's really stuck on there. There you go. That is looking clean, real nice. I like that see-through look. Super cool. Okay. Very nice. And uh, the razor is here. I'm going to put this together really quick. All right, let's get this razor on there. There's these notches, so I assume that's like that. And we got that like that, I'm assuming. Okay, so I find myself needing to pre-screw these in to create some teeth in there because it wasn't going through. Now let me just do the other side. All right, guys, I finally, like a tap and die set, I got that tapped in there. Now I'm going to try to actually get it through. Yeah, it's definitely off. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But it's just ever so slightly off. So I'm going to cut a little bit off of here. 
so it lines up correctly. To be honest, it's probably the filament. It kept getting stuck. It's really old filament, but uh, still really cool looking filament. I just had it for maybe two years, just sitting on the shelf. So the printer kept saying it was getting stuck because the filament was sticking to each other. They weren't like, uh, it wasn't um, intertwined with each other or anything like that, but it's just so old and it was getting kind of brittle. But I just figured this would be kind of cool to have like this translucent look. Okay. So with this deburr tool, I just kind of wore away at this part. So hopefully it'll uh, line up with the holes now. All right. Now I think it's lined up. It is hot in this room. The thermometer shows 96.8. I am sweating bullets. Bam. All right. Now hopefully the other hole lined up and we could just do this put it in and call it a day yeah I feel like that lined up nicely honestly that's really cool I like that a lot um, and then you have this little holster here really cool really sweet I'm really glad I did that let's actually give it a try now all right guys so I forgot to press record and I took out the little bit that's that prints out right here using the bamboo lab scraper also this one this one that one and that one and uh <laughs> i really enjoyed it i just i guess i didn't press record but as i was scraping it out it flung into there and i'm just like i freaking love this thing um this is great i kind of want to print out all of them but i don't need all of them right now so i'll just use one for now but that about wraps it up for today's vlog until next time, guys, peace, love, and joy.